Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and today I want to show you a bunch of clips of the Detonate Dead Low Life Inquisitor uh, versus all of the end game basically. So against Red Tier Elder, just a bit of um, gameplay and map clear, and of course the Guardians of Tier 16 and Shaper himself. Because uh, yeah, everything went rather well and the build, or let's just say Detonate Dead in general, felt pretty damn worth playing. I thought it was a lot of fun and uh, it really did give me a bit of enjoyment seeing the corpses explode, having a sort of setup uh, time for your skill, so putting down the Desecrate or the Unearthed Totem, and then having the awesome visual of the Detonate Dead go off and explode. Whether or not Low Life was the right move is still highly debatable. Honestly, I'm not sure it was, but I didn't really have the opportunity opportunity to fully respec into life and try that out, but just based off of numbers it looks like life is very competitive on the damage front, so it's probably a more comfortable playstyle uh, to not have to have the whole regen and ES based thing, which was somewhat awkward at times. So you do see that throughout some of these boss fights where you just have to kind of rely entirely on your regen, uh, making the boss fight just a little bit harder when you have to dodge some things and uh, rely off of the consecration a ground effect which happens whenever you get hit or 30 percent of the time when you get hit as well as a uh, sulfur flask so it's not the most reliable thing in the world uh, when you do get your regen happening and you can face tank a bit it's really not that bad and the damage is quite good and the uh, sustainability is quite good but when you run out of your ground and when you have to do a lot of dodging when the boss dodges a lot of your desecrate or your unearth it does get somewhat awkward and become kind of shit to face bosses on you can see though in this um, red tier sort of um, Elder Guardians. The damage is pretty absurd and uh, the detonate dead you know, viability is definitely there. At no point did I think I need to go into cremation or um, volatile dead. It was just totally fine with um, detonate dead all the way through. And uh, on this boss fight in particular, I did die once. I actually, for some reason, lost that clip. I did die once. That's the only boss fight I actually died on. Um, the Elder Constrictor, because uh, I wasn't immune to poison, and long story short, he just stacked too much poison, and I just couldn't get away from it. Apologies for not showing you that clip, but yes, I did die there. Uh, the rest of the Guardians, I do believe I didn't die on, and it's totally fine. You just, for the most part, face tank, do insane damage, and then move on. As you can see here, uh, you do have to deal with a few mechanics here or there every now and again, but, you know, it's really not too much of a problem. And this is all damage on a 5 link, so a 6 link is another 50% damage, which is rather large. The current shape of DPS is something like a million, so it is fairly hefty overall. And then, obviously, with the 6 link, if in your shavs, uh, that turns into 1.5 million. Or if you happen to be running the entire life base build uh, off of, let's say, a plus 1 tabula, you can hit the 1.5 million there, because uh, the damage is roughly the same as a life-based um, base, and you still hit the same amount of damage, but your defense and your playstyle and all that is probably going to be somewhat altered, as I have drastically gotten used to the actual uh, low-life version of the build, which, like I said, not entirely sure is the right move. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, use this as a template for uh, Detonate Dead, just to say that it definitely is viable and the damage is there, but I'd say build into the character at your own risk risk um, of how you want to do with uh, how sorry how you want to deal with the defenses whether it's life low life ci all of that but the template for the uh, character is just there for the actual skill itself and the damage and how you can build around the uh, skill and this is just a bit of gameplay showing you what the map clear looks like it is um sometimes not the most fluid thing because you definitely have to put down uh, a few corpses before you explode but for the most part i had no troubles and really did enjoy playing it. Uh, I believe this is actually the uh, other side of the clip, so um, just got that a bit rearranged. This was the start of the Constrictor fight, and this is the first time I did this arena, I think, and there's exploding frogs here. Nobody told me that. So these guys, I didn't really even notice, didn't really notice that they were coming at me and trying to explode, but there they go, and that's how I died. So that was just from the earlier clip, um, you know, does get a bit rough. And then we do have the uh, red tier elder. Basically, he freezes you still occasionally, and I wasn't standing in any consecrated ground or anything right there, so I had no regen, and holy shit, he almost killed me with that freeze. 
He then dove in and did another freeze for some reason, and there it is. Uh, so not the greatest start to the fight. The damage is really good once I actually play the game and uh, don't fuck it up and then dodge that one slam there, and that's basically the entire fight. Because, of course, straight after that, you just have to do the ad phase, which is trivial, you don't even have to succeed at it, and then just burn him down uh, in the last phase. Uh, before you actually collect your loot. So I won't even bother showing that, it's kind of boring. Uh, then I did move on to the tier 16 Guardians and I died once overall to the Hydra here. Uh, you do see that right there. And that's just solely because I fucked it up. Nothing really wrong with the build there. I just uh, wasn't paying as much attention as I should have. And I was kind of tilted because there was a lot of construction going on outside and uh, non-stop noise. But the damage is good and all of the rest of the Guardians went down death as well as Shaper, so I was pretty happy with that. I just kind of fudged on uh, Hydro a little bit there. So yeah, overall I was really happy with the damage of um, the tier 16 and the end game boss um, fights because uh, I was not expecting this much detonate dead damage, but it really does hit pretty damn hard on the front load. Um, and yeah, like I said, something like a million damage on the five link. So if you can get that sixth link, it becomes quite a potent tool. And I never even tried out uh, cremation or volatile dead on real end game. So I couldn't really tell you what it looks like, but from all accounts, apparently it's good. And you just set it up into the build one for one without changing anything and it's totally fine. Now you can see um, that the ads there die really quickly on the Chimera fight, but the Chimera fight itself is a bit of a clusterfuck as CI or rather um, low life, just ES in general when based on regen. He does currently have monster damage, so he's hitting like 30% harder, but basically you have to do a lot of dodging and a lot of running around. If you get hit by too many attacks in a row, you're just gonna die because uh, there's no reliable way of regening straight away. So there's a lot of dodging, a lot of running around and uh, it's just a bit finicky. Didn't end up dying even when the um, map had monster damage on it, but it can definitely be a bit scary, uh, as well as that during the smoke phase. Now Minotaur just pretty, pretty much straight up face tanked him. Uh, the map mods weren't the greatest. I think he had some monster life and Enfeeble on there, so occasionally I do have Enfeeble. If you have a Curse Flask, it's not at all a big deal. Now Minotaur is actually something I was really surprised with my damage on, because when I got the face tank and just stood still and went ham with my detonate dead, he moved down pretty quickly on the life total. So I was very happy with that. And uh, yeah, it's a shame I never got to test the full DPS potential with the sixth link, but as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, the sixth link just isn't at all necessary. Now the Phoenix is another kind of tricky one. You can see the damage when I go for the first phase here is pretty insane, but overall I was using Conk Effect, I think, and that means that killing the Phoenixes wasn't that good and uh, it was a bit finicky after that, especially as I mentioned with low life and being purely regen based, it gets a little bit awkward at times. So the fight lasted about a minute uh, instead of just purely face tanking or just purely um, killing phoenixes really quickly and easily. Had to do a lot of dodging, fair bit of running around, and uh, in the end, like I said, took about a minute, which I guess really isn't too bad. Worst case scenario, our tier 16 boss fight took a minute. I guess we're kind of spoiled these days, but uh, yeah, it was a fairly smooth fight. And like I said, no deaths uh, except for that Hydra phase initially, and it all went rather well. As for Shaper, I only have this clip because my Twitch cut out for absolutely no reason. Internet didn't die, Twitch actually cut out, and the file is basically corrupted. I think you can look at it on the VOD if you want, but I only have the first phase because it cut out as I was running to the second phase. The damage was pretty damn good. I did end up doing it deathless, and it is just a bit tricky as always, like I said, with low life, but it all went rather uneventfully and, uh, yeah, it was a pretty smooth kill as well. So you can see damage is there, and otherwise you just have to play the game and avoid all his shit. So that's about it for the boss kills. I'll just go over the finality of the character for you in case you want to do some detonate dead action. Right, so the character did hit level 90. As I said, an Inquisitor, about 7.6k ES and 500 unreserved life. Like I said, I would have loved to have get uh, got some clarity onto my... Uh, actual life pool, but that didn't really pan out and end up swapping between Clarity and Herald of Thunder, uh, depending on the situation. For the most part, I was using Herald of Thunder almost all of the time, and then I swapped into Clarity for the endgame bosses, because the Herald of Thunder has very limited uh, utility at that point. 
and it doesn't really matter, I'd rather the stable amount of mana regen, though whenever we're standing on consecrated ground, uh, as you can see, we have quite a lot of mana regen and ES regen, and that is of course thanks to Pious Path. So with Pious Path, it makes the ES and low life um, side of things a lot more viable and comfortable. Without that, if you're in the life-based uh, section, you'll probably be grabbing Augury of Penitence and Instruments of Virtue, and that's a, a large part of why the damage is going to be uh, pretty comparable still uh, to the um, Pain Attunement. As well as that, you're more flexible with gear, so you can get more spell damage, let's say, uh, crit car speed on a shield, and uh, it's probably easier to get some uh, other pieces of jewelry, for example, too. But overall, I do have the password tree for you guys to, you know, play around with and inspect as the life-based version. Overall, I'm really not sure low life is the answer. It definitely worked, but uh, if I would try it again, I'd definitely try it as life instead, and uh, that's going to be kind of up to you guys to explore. Uh, my last two points are when and grabbed Zealot's Oath just so I could have a much more reliable uh, amount of ES happening and not purely based off of um, the flask which I had which was um, only giving us Zealot's Oath during the flask. So instead of that we just have a Sulfur Flask, um, pure Zealot's Oath and always a bit of regen with the uh, Golem. So it's a bit of stable regen and then altogether we're hitting about you know, 1000 ES a second which is pretty damn nice for our our sustain whenever we're on consecrated ground. Now besides that, uh, I did grab a catalyst for pure damage, ended up being um, probably about as good as an item as I could possibly get for pure damage. Can't really get much better than that, it's pretty damn hard to do so. Uh, and aside from that, I did roll most of my own shit, so I rolled these boots, I rolled uh, this shield, I rolled this helm, and I bought this um, pair of gloves, which I covered, I think, mostly in the last video. But yeah, there is faster casting blind on these gloves, uh, specifically so that I can blind a bit more, uh, so I can drop my all the storms a lot quicker, and so that it ups the mana cost to let my uh, arcane surge just do a bit more work. So it's a level 8 arcane surge, uh, as opposed to it being like level 5 or 6 or so. Uh, overall, yeah, it does mean that the playstyle is a bit weirder because you do have to do a lot of this um you know this 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 there's a lot of different um it feels kind of hectic at times but i thought it was a fairly rewarding play style in the end you got you know a fair amount out of how well you played it but your orb of storms has to go down quite frequently just to give us power charge on crit uh, and arcane surge and as well as that the blind effect um, and then, of course, Desecrate has to go down quite often uh, to give us some corpses to explode. But by the time I was at this stage, level 20 Orb of Storms with a Herald of Thunder, uh, it did do enough damage that Orb of Storms plus Herald of Thunder would kill things quite routinely and I wouldn't have to Desecrate. So keep that in mind when you're trying to make your own character that uh, the end game can look like that, where you can just go Orb of Storms with a Herald of Thunder and it should work out rather well. Um, but otherwise, there's probably not too much else I need to mention from the previous video. I'll just go over the links real quick. Uh, Shield Charge, Faster Attacks and Fortify in uh, um, one socket there, a flame dash there as well, uh, stone golem, desecrate, and spell cascade, so you can drop all 15 corpses at once, so that's pretty damn convenient nowadays, uh, GMP, unearth, and spell totem, so that is when you will um, place it for bosses and that sort of thing, and this thing's just going to keep shooting uh, corpses at the boss, and that means you really don't have to refresh your desecrate too often. As long as your totem is down, you will be just um, going off with your detonate dead at the boss's feet. So it is very quality of life to have one of these in your setup. And I definitely do recommend getting one when you're starting to do some boss action, I'd say. Um, over here, we have Blasphemy and Temp Chains. That, um, just felt good for quality of life for some defense action in the build. And Discipline attached to Blood Magic so that we can get into the low life category. And that's pretty much it. And then a Clarity or a Herald of Thunder uh, over here. Now, for the actual setup for the links themselves, I ran basically all of the time, um, just for mapping and everything. Detonate Dead, Crit Strikes, Control Destruction, Spell Echo, bah, and Increased Area of Effect. Subbing in Conk Effect when we go for single target. Uh, the tooltip is 274k um, prior to any buffs of any sort. And actual damage is 
currently 867,000 against Shaper over here. This is with um, everything that's going to be up all the time. And that's the spell portion, the corpse explosion portion is 190. So basically a million damage um, whenever it goes off on average. You can see it hits really hard. So you can really witness the chunks when that's happening. And if you do happen to lock your way into a sixth link, chuck an early focus in there and you hit really hard. Ends up 1.3 mil and then you have the corpse explosion. So that's about 1.5 mil worth of damage. Uh, on a six link with the low life setup. Only a level 20 gem, you could of course get a level 21. I think there's a few out there. But uh, yeah, that is more or less the character, I'd say. There's not really much else to say. I leveled his detonate dead the whole way. It's uh, very smooth. You can use some cremation action, that's totally fine too. Uh, or some volatile dead action, if you really wanna lean that way. I personally didn't because uh, it's strong and already highly abused. I wanted to do something a bit different and uh, rely entirely on Detonate Dead, which I thought was prettier anyway. Um, as for the jewels, I will say actually, uh, percent ES and some crit multi. That's what I got on all my jewels and I thought it was worth doing because uh, that's largely where you fill out a lot of your crit multi and I thought it is um, somewhere I could get a bit more ES as well. So as always, I will drop you guys the path of building uh, you can check the gear and the tree and all of that. And uh, I'll give you the life-based version too. You can make up your own minds about life, low life, and uh, detonate dead, VD, whatever. If you want to do Pulse Pen as well for that stuff, that's fine too. Just basically proving though that the damage for detonate dead is definitely there if you build accordingly for it. So that's it for the character, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.